Hi, this is Nicole Kupchuk, and I'm here with... I'm Joel Green. And we're going to chat with you today in our 10-minute tidbit section on the use of calcium channel blockers in hypertensive emergency. So, uh, so welcome to everyone. So check out over my left shoulder this gorgeous view of Seattle, Washington. This is the reason we live here, because it is so gorgeous. This is a winter day, and it is stunning. So, um, and, but anyway, so Joel... Welcome to the show. Thank you. And so Joel actually wrote a blog on a, a certain calcium channel blocker that we're going to take. I'm uh, going to talk about today. It's called uh, Club Works. And uh, but a couple things. Let's just chat really quickly about just the general use of calcium channel yeah. blockers. Okay. So I want you guys to all think: Why do you use calcium channel blockers? Just in general. So they come PO and IV form. So why would you use them? So Joel, you name one. Yeah, so a couple reasons. Hypertension is one. So hypertension is a big one. And it's actually, uh, calcium channel blockers are recommended in the 2017 hypertension guidelines. Another one would be angina, especially Prince Metals angina. And then? And then rate control for things like yes. AFib and SVT. Yeah, and very common use. Probably the one you're most familiar with is diltiazem. And so diltiazem, very commonly used for either SVT, AFib, slows down the rate to give you nice control. Okay, so that's what we're using. And then our neuro friends might even use an ifenipine as well for racist bathrooms. So. So, yeah, so our nemotipine. Our nemotipine. Nemotipine, yeah. Nemotipine, yeah, yes. nemotipine for um, prevention of the coronary, I'm sorry, cerebral artery yeah. basis spasm. And then the other one, nephetopine, a lot of us have used over the years yeah. for right. which we, um, so don't do this anymore. Yeah. It's actually black box warning, right. but we used to poke a hole in it and, and shoot it under the tongue. Tub. Don't yeah. do that, okay? That's no longer recommended. Right. So that would be for And cardio. it was a huge safety risk for nurses. A gigantic, like oh yeah, we tend to poke your finger, right. right? At least you can check your glucose. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. and then um, another one you might be familiar with is nicardine or cardi, which is a really nice um, IV direct arterial vasodilator um, that's used in, to treat hypertension. So those are probably the most common ones you're used yeah. to. And then um, what's another one they might use? Maybe uh, sulforaphamil? Yeah. That's kind of an old school one. Yeah. But those are, those would be some common uh, calcium channel blockers. Okay. So a couple things about calcium channel blockers you need to understand is, um, first of all, is there's three different classes of calcium channel blockers, and they have negative mitotropic effects, so meaning when you give them, it can actually suppress cardiac contractility. Now, DIL probably has the least effect on cardiac contractility. It's more cardioselective, but, um, but um, that's one thing you have to always keep in mind. So if you've got someone who's got an EF of 20%, are you going to just rush and give them a calcium channel blocker? Probably not the best plan. Yeah. With caution, right? And then one other thing I want to mention is that nurses constantly, so I teach all over the country, right? Nurses always want to put calcium channel blockers in the heart failure management yeah. kind of, uh, you know, medication list. And it's not. It's, it's not. Um, that would be more of an ACE inhibitor, an R, um, a beta blocker. Carvedilol is probably one of the most commonly used. Spironolactone, which is now dosor antagonist, but not calcium channel blockers. Okay. And for the immersion phases, they'd be using nitroprusside. Yeah, so nitroprusside nitride, which we, has been around forever, and a lot of us are, um, you know, very... I think some of us have PTSD from, from nitroprusside <laughs> yes. in hypertensive uh, yeah. emergency situations. Okay. Yeah. So today, we're going to talk about a specific calcium channel blocker called... Bovidipine, or Clevopraxis, the brand name it sells under. Uh, the drug's been out since about 2008, so it's been out for almost 10 years now. Yeah. Um, the Which I didn't know was not that one, I right? know. It's like, when I was reading the literature, I was like, you kidding me, 2008. Yeah. But, um, the cool thing about the drug is it's very easy to remember what it does. It's a uh, milky white substance similar to like what propofol or your lipids look like in your TPN. Okay. Um, and so if you just think milk and calcium, or it starts with the C and calcium starts with the C, is the easiest way to remember what this drug does. I like that. Yeah. Okay. It's a uh, very quick onset. It's uh, They say start at 1 to 2 milligrams an hour. Um, you can double the dose of this drug every 90 seconds. So uh, it's pretty quick acting. Yeah, which right. is amazing. So, I mean, I wouldn't be doing that with a blood pressure cuff to say every 5 minutes or yeah. 15 minutes. You know, best practice guidelines, you're probably going to be using all of these types of patients. Yeah, anyway. and you guys, just any time you're using medications like Nipride or um, Clevoprex, really you should think about what it have requesting an R line. Um, Nipride especially. Now, if you're using Nipride for heart failure management for purely after load reduction, that's not the patient I'm talking about. I'm talking about patients where you're using these drugs to bring down their or control their blood pressure. You should have an R line. Okay, what else? 
Um, so because of this quick action time, I mean, you're doubling this dose up to, manufacturers says about 21 milligrams per hour. Um, there's new studies coming out that says you can go up to 32 milligrams an hour. Okay. Um, but the problem is, because it's a lipid-based drug, patients can have uh, overdose of lipids. So it's not the drug they're overdosing on, it's actually the lipid counts. So again, too many calories from the yeah. Well, the, is that like a ketogenic diet, Joel? Right. For January, everybody who's <laughs> on their keto diets, it's all fat. So, you know, it's perfect. So maybe they'll lose weight yeah. on the hospital. Yeah. yeah, okay, no. All right. <laughs> but that's a precaution because, you know, if they're already on tube feeding or if they're on propofol already or they're on TPM with lipids, you have to take that into account how much lipid these patients are getting. So that's something huge yeah. to think about. Especially with liver failure. These patients are going to be not able to process those lipids. So. Okay. All right. So something to think about. All right. What else? Um, the other cool thing is because it's fast acting, it's also fast off time. So your half-lives are pretty short. So uh, if you overdose on it, it's just, just turn the drip off or cut it in half. Yeah. And within 90 seconds to a minute, you should start seeing results in their blood pressure. Yeah. Which is awesome. Uh, it's not something we see with nicardamine or diltiazem or any of those other drugs. Nipride, you might see a quick yeah, result. Nipride's quick, quick uh, on, quick off. And nicardamine's pretty quick on, quick off as well. But, um, but you know, you think about like positive inotropes, a totally different class, like milrinone. You know, somebody gets hypotensive from milrinone, you're screwed. You're wow. waiting forever <laughs> to get that, heart, that yeah. blood pressure back up. Yeah, yeah. so, okay. All right, um, so we're going to use uh, Clavacrex or calcium channel blockers for hypertensive emergencies. Now, is there a, maybe a contraindication or somebody you wouldn't want to use this medication in? Yeah, so there's a few patients that you wouldn't want to use this kind of medication. One would be if they have an allergy to egg or soy, uh, okay. because that's one of the main bases of their lipids. Uh, if patients have um, our, uh, aortic stenosis is another big one. Uh, you know, aortic stenosis is tough. Um, you know, my nightmare patient is always somebody who's got aortic stenosis and some other medical yeah. issue going on because they cannot tolerate big changes of preload and afterload. And so, yeah, always with aortic stenosis, just really kind of treat them gently. Yeah. Okay, what else? Um, and, what you else? know, it's really about it. the, the real big, yeah, the big highlights of contraindications. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and then right now, I guess it would be education because a lot of people haven't been using the sure. drug, so yeah. they're not sure how to use it, what to do with it. Um, so yeah, okay. Well, um, thanks to, for um, joining us today yeah. on our ten minute tidbit section. And what I want to just um, let you guys all know is again, Jewel did write a blog on this. So on my website, Nicole Kupcher Consulting, you can get additional information on these and calcium channel blockers and specifically. Levitapine or club cracks. And we just want to thank you for joining in and the, just look at this awesome view. We love Seattle, right? Heart from right. Seattle. We love Seattle. Okay. Yep. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Thanks, Talk guys. to you later.